that, I'm going to welcome our speakers this morning um, who are from the Guadalupe Blanco River Authority. Um, and we have three folks there. We have Cindy Thomas Jimenez, Elizabeth Gutierrez, and we have Michelle Darnell. Um, and I'm gonna let them tell you anything else that um, they wanna tell you about themselves as they take us through this amazing presentation on environmental education before, during, and after COVID-19. They've been doing some amazing work. I've been following them this year, so I'm excited to hear all about it. Um, if you have any questions for them, just feel free to put them in the chat box and hope we, hopefully we have some time for them at the end and we'll, um, and we'll take them then or we can stop if they seem to be pressing. Take it away, guys. Okay, good morning. Uh, we are happy to see you. We're sitting at the amazing Irma Lewis Seguin Outdoor Learning Center, which of course is in Seguin. They're letting us use their facility and we actually spend a great deal of time here, as you will see. And we're going to be just discussing uh, how we've tried to morph into a new, you know, a new world really for teaching students about the environment. So we're gonna talk about things we did before, all the amazing work we did then, how we tried to transform all that amazing work into amazing work online, and, uh, and also materials for the classroom for teachers, and uh, how we can see this is going to work out in the future. Okay, so Liz is gonna share the screen. All right, so there we all are. Um, I, I remember very well last year about this time, Liz and I are both geographers, so we saw this coming, so to speak, like back in January of 2020. And I remember one day we were talking to Michelle about it and she goes, what do you mean a virus? <laughs> do you remember? <laughs> no. We said, oh, you need to go watch the news. Yeah. And then about a week later, everything shut down. So uh, I came fast and furious. I think it caught a lot of us. Uh, just kind of at a situation where we didn't know where to go because we still we all feel so passionately about working with students and we wanted to be able to continue that work so we're going to tell you how we did it all right so first off we thought we would show you some of the work that we did prior to covid you know we were out and about um, we spent a lot of time at parks uh, at environmental centers at learning centers we brought students into our facility. We've got somebody there in, in the lab teaching kids. We had uh, kids doing both recreation-based activity as well as science-based activity. Uh, really, we work in 10 different counties from Kendall County, which is where Bernie is. You just follow the Guadalupe River all the way down to the coast. So our southernmost counties are Referio County and Calhoun County. So just more slides of us working with students. Um, we do spend a lot of time in creeks and doing water quality uh, studies with students. And you see the little non-point source model there in the middle, we call that the classroom. So we didn't only just go to outdoor settings, we also worked directly in schools with students one-on-one. -on -one. So we've had a, a a pretty good run at working with these schools. We have a good reputation with most of the school districts in our river basin. There are about 32, 31, 31 school districts in our river basin. And so when it comes time to uh, do something new and fabulous, most of the coordinators that we work with will take the time to stop and listen to us and forward that information on. Is there anything you want to say? Um, and on top of all the outreach that we do with students, we also um, have historically put on many professional developments with districts. So sometimes a district will have a week long of development, professional development, and we'll manage to be on their schedule. And that way uh, teachers can sign up through their you know, school district portal. And then we would do like Project Wild or Project Wet classes there or teach our own curriculum. And so that's kind of like what our summer looks like. We're always in a room full of teachers and other environmental educators. And it was just kind of like, what do we do? We only have a few months to plan for it. And we did actually get to put together some online training. So it's kind of, it was just kind of quick thinking and, you know, let's see if it works and right. hope for the best. Okay. So um, we have historically had uh, some 
printed materials that we give out to schools. And one of them is our fourth grade program called the Journey Through the Guadalupe River Basin. And during a typical school year, we give kits of 25 booklets and maps and pencils and, you know, some type of a USB drive, just all kinds of information to every single fourth grade teacher in the River Basin who wants it. So it's all free for them. Um, we typically send those requests for the pre next year in April and May. We couldn't do that last year. Well, we tried, but we didn't get very many responses. So we decided we need to start moving towards putting all of that stuff online. So now we do have our journey program and the teacher's guide online. We also have a story map that accompanies it. So I think Liz is gonna show you this really quick. So a story map is um, simply kind of a combination of uh, a map and information off to the side. So we have two little cartoon characters. There's Lupe the turtle and Edward the armadillo that lead students through the river basin. So uh, there they are. All right, so to you can scroll through that or you can go, go over to the far left side and there are buttons that you can push so that you can learn more about uh, the Guadalupe River Basin. And that's really what our journey program is all about is getting fourth grade students familiar with their river system and to think about all the different ways that we depend on water and uh, the other water uses besides uh, human consumption. All right, can we go back? So we're very proud of Lupe and Edward. They've been around since 1985, long time. They've gone through some, you know, makeovers along the way. All right, so at the middle school level, we also have a, an online program. It's called Waters to the Sea Guadalupe. And this is actually our second version of this. It's available 24-7, 365 to anybody who wants to see it. And we put this together with a company out of university out of Minnesota. They um, have done a number of these Waters to the Sea programs. They have, um, they're interested in doing more in Texas, by the way. This one is very specific to the Guadalupe. I think Liz is gonna show you a, a quick peek and so we have uh, our main character. We have historical characters that introduce students to the river basin. And the first one you see is uh, Ferdinand Lindheimer right there. He's the father of Texas botany. Over to the right, you see there are four modules. There's one on the water cycle, one on watersheds, one on the water quality lab, ecosystems. Let's just click on the lab real quick. And so this is uh, something that students can do in the class. It can be teacher-led, it can be student-driven. It really just depends on how the teachers want to use it. You can X that. And so over across the top, you can see there are a number of tabs. And so we've classified some of the interactive modules under those tabs. Like if you click on earth science, you can see that we um, have a number of different uh, interactive things for students over on the left side where the dots are, right on the one on the Edwards. Okay. So we've got uh, one on whipping cranes, we've got one on the Edwards aquifer. These are very, we like to call them robust modules. There's a ton of information in there and it's, uh, it seems to be something the students really enjoy. We tried as best we could to tile this to the peak We've seen over the years that a lot of the water, a lot of the water peaks have disappeared. So welcome to the mysterious <laughs> world of we'll the <laughs> uh, We've seen over time that uh, the, wa the water peaks have disappeared, but I hear a rumor that some of them are coming back, and it's more of a, a vertical alignment now, which is great news. We developed a short teacher training to accompany that. We just put that together ourselves and. It just shows the teachers walk through it and do some assessments along the way. It's about a three hour training. Next. So you, I know I'm talking, you, and if not, you want to jab me with your elbow or something. So uh, <laughs> we, uh, so we had requests pretty early last spring to put a lesson up that I typically would go give in uh, the classrooms with that big model that you can see behind me there on that video shot. So we, we did the video, we put it out there. Uh, a lot of the teachers at the seventh grade level that we work with typically did take advantage of that and sent it out to their students and developed uh, some assessment stuff along, on, along 
for their own, I guess, yags or something like that. We also have started to develop lessons themselves. If you click on the bottom one, just online things that teachers can go to. This is developed for earth and space science at the high school level. And everything's all inclusive. It's out there. And the, the way that we put it out there is to uh, go to our blog. So we don't really have a Google Classroom, so to speak. So we decided the best way to do that is to use a blog. So we have a blog that we've been working on. Actually, I'm going to say Liz has been working on. She's my, my wizard. And um, so when teachers go to the blog, they can search for different things. Right now, we have a big composition contest for kids. Every year, we've done this. So students write compositions. They send them into us. We score them. It's always a, a water-related prompt, and then we send prize. Well, we used to take prizes to the schools and make a big hoopla out of it, but I think this year we'll probably just be shipping them or dropping them all. And Liz is going to show you how the, the teachers can take a, a copy of what we've given to them and download it, and then they can send it out to their, to their virtual learners. I think I caught you off guard there. So in our blog, we have a, a lot of a information that we're going to be putting out. It's kind of going to serve as our clearinghouse. Um, we typically didn't have too much digital content, but we've kind of been working on it even since before COVID to try to get as much as we could to be consumed either virtually or still in pen and paper so that at least there's an option for teachers to choose how they want to push out their assignments. So what we're doing is we're creating Google slide decks with these assignments and we're just kind of housing them in separate folders and then we'll put out the link for people to go look and download. So here's the, the booklet that is in print, but we've also converted it to a Google slide assignment. So they can load that directly into their learning management system. And as the students click through, uh, if, if they're doing it pen and paper in the classroom, well, the students that are virtual, they can also you know, fill in the same booklet, but they'll just be doing it via the Google Slides. So it took kind of a lot of tweaking and then thinking of how how a fourth grader would click through and, and what would be a barrier and what would it be. So we kind of added instructions to tell them, you know, double click on this box so you can fill it in. And so far, you know, I think it's been going okay. We haven't had too much feedback because this is the time that they're usually using right. the content. Yeah. So we won't really know until maybe April if it's something that they can do and enjoy. So we have all these little manipulatives that they normally would just write in, but since they don't, we had to create something for them to move. And we did use uh, teachers. We asked for feedback from teachers who were in the classroom. And this okay. booklet is in Spanish and English as well. So yay. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Um, we, now this is where Michelle comes in. She works with us out here at the Outdoor Learning Center and she teaches water quality lessons out here, and I'm gonna let her take over at this point. Okay, you got this one. Um, so what I do is I reach out to the Seguin and Navarro school districts, and before COVID, they would actually come to the learning center and we would have lessons down at the creek or at the pond or anywhere else. So so what, what Liz is showing you right here is, we have a stream trailer on the on the far left there. That's Cindy, I believe. Yes, it is. Um, presenting that stream trailer, and y'all are going to get to see that in a little bit. Um, in the middle, whenever I teach a water quality lesson, I also bring in Texas Master Naturalist to teach other lessons. So that is a bird beak adaptation lesson going on right there. And at the bottom, those two on the far right, that is the uh, watershed model. This is, this is, this looks like a, those three pictures are a typical second grade field mm -hmm. trip for me. Mm -hmm. What I do is I, um, I have set my lesson so that I have a, a group for second grade, a group for third grade, so that with, with me working just with Seguin, sometimes I get to see these kids for three years in a row. And there is nothing that makes you prouder than when they come and say, oh, I remember you said that last year. I'm like, all right, I did my job, yay. But um, that, that's, that's what I do. 
Yes, and she's been able to reach despite COVID. Oh, despite what has happened with COVID, go back. Uh, Okay, go back one more. Okay, so since the the grant that she's working off of was to get kids to the Singing Outdoor Learning Center, well, as we know, students are not going on any type of field experiences this year or last year. So we decided to take the program on the road. We bought a trailer and we piled everything in there. And so now Michelle reaches out to the schools and works with the teachers to find a location on campus that's outside where they can teach these lessons. So she's done a really good job of putting all this together and we've been somewhat successful. I think the slide says there we've reached over the 1200 students. Yeah, she's still working. Okay. We also decided to try to put trunks together since we couldn't get into classrooms to teach students. We put together four elementary age trunks and four middle school trunks. And so these are available for loan. We don't charge anybody, we deliver them. A lot of these are project wet lessons because we feel strongly that those lessons uh, are things that teachers can teach and the kids will enjoy. And it's really going to hit some of their peaks. So if you'll hit up that first link. So what we did was we uh, put together a series of little videos. So this is an introduction video where I'm talking about how we have all these trunks available for loan. And then she scrolls down, it gives you a list of each one, the H2O Olympics, and uh, there's one called Incredible Journey. There's also one on stream erosion and one on sedimentary rock. So there's a very short video for each of those for the teachers to look at when they're trying to decide if they want to use this trunk. We highlight the peaks here on the website. Um, and so we started filming those in the fall. We were a little bit behind, I think. And so when teachers want to borrow a trunk, they send in a request and we start getting them scheduled. All right, let's go back to the presentation. So those have been uh, somewhat successful, not as much as I had wanted. I do think it's really hard to get to teachers right now. They're overworked, overstressed. Um, the people who have used them, I have a middle school trunk out right now and she, she said that this is the best thing that she's used all year and it's so well, she said the lesson's so well done, everything is in there. She doesn't understand why other teachers aren't using it. And I said, neither do we. You need to publish her testimony on a video. Yes. Okay, next. So the way that we tried to get out to information about these trunks was we contacted the district curriculum people to get a hold of what are called their YAGs, their yearly annual year to year. year. Oh yeah, sorry. Year to year to year. Year. Oh. You're at a glance, it's got too many acronyms in my head. To find out when they were teaching certain concepts. So if you look on this one, this is a, a poster we sent to all Comal ISD teachers in fourth and fifth grade. So we showed uh, with the stream erosion models, these are the peaks, and this is the third week grading period where you are teaching this. So this is when you can borrow it. And all they have to do is look at that poster, look at those peaks, watch all the videos, and then you know, there's a link at the bottom for them to watch the video and make a reservation. So we put together a complete package, the actual product that they're going to use, and then we marketed that directly to the district. And then we also made videos to help with visuals and included photos as well. So everything that you see is originally made by Cindy or myself and no outside help. And we're just kind of trying to think, okay, if I was a teacher, what would help me make a decision? And we're hoping that this is what so this doing. is something these trunks, you know, it's all going to come to an end in a couple of months, but we do think this is something that can live beyond COVID. We think that they will still be, able, we're still going to have them available if they want to use them. Okay. So we have learned that uh, what we expected to happen and what's really happening are two different things. So we expected the teachers to send back the trunks as we told them to, but no, they've come back with items missing or not stored correctly. We expected them to send back all the reusable items, but no, um, some of them are just thrown away and we don't know why. It's like, where is everything? In a rush to clean, you yes. get lost. Next, we, we thought that they would be used. You know, the, if the teacher is going to borrow a trunk, we expect them to use it, but no, we go back and we pick it up and it's like it hasn't been touched. Uh, we expect them to review the lesson in advance, but you know they're not always 100% prepared, so they have some questions. So how to address these things? 
we've learned that we have to additional adi uh, purchase additional supplies to replenish some of these trucks, schedule time in the calendar for cleaning and picking up and you know picking it up, cleaning it out and getting it ready for the next loan. And then I've learned to send the lessons to teachers in advance so that they will uh, have time to look it over. So one of the trunks that's very popular is the stream erosion models. I just threw in some costs so you would know about how much it would cost to put this together. This one was so popular that we actually have two trunks. Uh, we had to take uh, Michelle's out of her uh, trailer and put it into rotation here. So it, each of those trunks is approximately nine to $900 to $1,000. And uh, these are very labor intensive to replenish as you will see. All right, another popular trunk is on sedimentary rock fossils and weathering. That was a little cheaper to put together, but that's because we have our two main uh, ingredients, so to speak, are donated. So that one's a little uh, under $300. And again, it is labor intensive. Next, we have, uh, this is the trunk that's out right now that the teacher loves so much. It's called Seeing Watersheds. It is a project wet lesson. And why we chose some of the project wet lessons at the beginning was because many, all the ones that we chose, except for the incredible journey, I think, have an online version available through Project Wet. So you've got kids in the classroom, they're going to use all these manipulatives, but if you've got kids at home, then they can go through that exact same lesson online. Okay. Again, labor intensive. <laughs> all right, we're going to go live, so bear with us while Liz cues us up on a um, iPad, I think, and show you some of the We could hear you just for a minute there, guys. But we're really, whoops. Aaron, I see you. Okay. We had <laughs> to turn go. off that other laptop while we did the switch. Okay. So we are live now. And who's gonna, who do I focus on? Okay, Michelle, go ahead. Okay, so one of the main things you're gonna need is a label maker. You've got to label everything and then where it goes back to, um, like this, this lid says, uh, place, con place containers with wet sand at the bottom of the truck. So when you send out this lesson, when it comes back, all of this sand is going to be wet. That's where the labor intensive part comes in because we have to bring it back to the learning center and lay it all out in these trays and dry it. And then I've got master naturalists who come in and help me bag up the sand for the next lessons. Um, another thing that's, yeah, bagging up the sand. So another thing that, that we do here, we're just gonna get Liz to kind of pan right quick. These trunks, um, we have learned that they have got to have good labels so that they, the teachers know what we expect to be returned. The first one where we had so many missing things, we just had it labeled whatever. I mean, we just put the label on it, but we didn't, we, and we had the instructions inside the binder, inside the binder, but, you know, people don't read instructions. So now we have, we have stuff on the, on the list. Yeah. So we okay. learned to um, label each trunk what it is. Um, what we expect and how we expect them to return things. So that's our stream erosion. This is our sedimentary rock, and this is our beach so, Lots of trunks. Some of them are bigger. Some of them are smaller. Some of them are heavier. Some of them are lighter. Every every trunk is a new adventure. Okay. So Michelle um, and I put these trunks together during the summer. I think we started. 
And we just started trying to figure out how could we send this to teachers so it would be easy for this to be used. So we have a very detailed lesson that goes inside a notebook for each teacher. That's the one I send in ahead of time. We have step by step instructions of what they should do when they get it into the classroom. We realized that students probably wouldn't be able to handle the same things. So that's why we have um, individual bags of sand. If we were going to do this somewhere, we would have three to four kids working on one model. But now we have each kid working on their own model, which is where it gets kind of difficult because all of these components that are in this kit need to be clean. Looking at the kit right here, we do use a commercial kit. It's called Lab Aids. It's called Extreme Modeling Stream Erosion and Deposition. Lots of that, $175. And you get a set of six components for in each box. So the lesson itself is the teacher goes in the deposition. So the students put the sand in the tray, they pour the water in this, this little thing I call a cloud, and then it drips out and it starts to form a little um, channel, so to speak. So we're trying to teach them about land forms because one of their teeth, the headwaters, the river valley, the delta. And so this is one that we are currently teaching to every single fifth grade student in Victoria. They have allowed us to come to the school to teach. And some of the some, sometimes we go in and teach this lesson inside a cafeteria where all the kids are six feet apart. Sometimes we're outside, which depends on the campus. We've learned that that can be very messy. So we have towels. So we have because these kids have to clean off their, their trays. We have to dip them in water and it's just a mess. And so we have to get ready for the next class. And then we sanitize everything, sanitize the kids, and send them along the merry way. This is one of this is a really favorite of the teachers. Um, Good for you. I, 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 I've been to Victoria twice this week, and on both campuses, they took pictures of these. They want them for their own campus for themselves. Okay, move on. Y'all don't mind every time I pick up this tripod, I have to land on the same mark that I have on the floor. This lesson is on sedimentary rock and fossils and weathering. We developed it because we have traditionally spent a lot of time in the Canyon Lake Gorge where there are lots of fossils. And we have an outdoor classroom set up with students to rotate through stations. And we thought that we would try to reach out specifically to the schools who have come to that in the past and, and replicate those lessons. So what we decided to do was we have uh, somewhere in that gorge, there's an area out uh, there were, we have volunteers who will gather fossils. And these are actually tiny little fossils that are in, in the, these what we call river channels, and, or little stream channels, rather. So, so when, when, when Cindy says gather fossils, we're talking about they just take a shovel and put it in a bag. Yeah. This they, isn't picking up little fossils. No. This is, they're just getting stuff out of the bottom of this little channel. Yeah. And then they're bringing it to us. So we've learned that we could use that and some gypsum, which is also donated to us, thanks to Michelle for thinking. So we have the students mix this together. So they're measuring and so on. They put their mixture in these little pink silicone molds. And then uh, a day later, they'll put the molds into these little petri dishes. <laughs> Those must have been made this morning. I made it yesterday. Oh, OK. <laughs> And then they are going to spray water. We have both water and vinegar so they can uh, to see different types of weathering. This is water, right? She's got vinegar. So we have the students um, looking at the making observations, drawing, talking, and discussing on their, on their little chart here. I had one teacher who used this. He said he also wanted to focus on wind, or, uh, wind and how it affects the rock. So he had students blowing through a straw or something like that on their little rock and he could make that an impact. So we might think that was enough for next year. So as you can see, this is what a lot of rock went into this. We give them little um, hand lenses so they can get a close up look at their rock. And at the end of the lesson, the teachers take all this wet stuff in, in one particular container and send it back to us, and we try to reuse it as many times as we can. All right, the next uh, prompt is one that Michelle and I felt so strongly about. What a great, great set of lessons. You know, this lesson is great. It's got lots of little activities that the kids to uh, participate in and we loved it so much. It's a project web lesson. We said, okay, we're going to have two trunks. We're going to have an elementary trunk and a middle school trunk. 
Well, nobody has borrowed this for me. <laughs> and we don't, I think part of the reason is because by the time we got those gag posters out to the schools, this was taught in the first six to nine weeks and it had already passed. So I am going to send it back out to the teachers. So at the end of the school year, maybe after everybody's through with the amazing star test, then maybe they want to come back around and just have the kids do something fun and educational. So we're hoping that we can send the trunks back during probably the month of May. It would be nice if they check them out right before star for a review. It would be. We'll see. But <laughs> So we have lots of fun trying to find pennies because each student needs this $20 pennies. So I went to the bank with the $20 bill and I said, I need $20 worth of pennies. This is during COVID and they just laughed at me. <laughs> so, you know, we've lessons learned. A lot of work went into these. Each student had their own individual kit with all the supplies. We also had some little kits that had water molecules. So we added this to it. Um, the project Wet Lesson for H2O Olympics is online and it's a very good comprehensive lesson. The yeah. thing I like about all of this is that we, this, these are lessons we also teach during professional development. And we always have like the bare minimum to carry into a training at whatever campus we have to go to. So now we have all this stuff. We have all this stuff so they can see what it would be like when, so this coming training in the summer, well, when we take this, it'll be another opportunity for them to see and touch and feel and buy into checking one out for free because it's free. So it's not yeah. going to cost them anything if it, if they like it or not. So one thing which y'all and I realized we both for classroom teachers is that especially the elementary level, they probably don't have water in their classroom. So we provide this container for them so they can fill it up with water and they'll be able to use it throughout most of the day. At some schools, you have a teacher that teaches science all day long. At other schools, each teacher you now teaches it because they're self-contained. So those campuses that are self-contained, they might want to keep it the trunks a little longer because they have to pass it from teacher to teacher to teacher. All right, we're heading outside now. I'm going to temporarily put the camera off so we can run out to our spot. So excited we get to go outside. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Okay, we are back. I forgot to crank up my tripod. Crank it up there, no vibration, so video's off. Okay, we're all back. Okay, we're back. Um, when I sent out the YAG the poster to the schools, we said we had trunks available for lunch. Well, we also have models available for lunch. So we have those little Enviroscape models. I have one on drinking and wastewater treatment. I have a coastal model. Uh, and then this is also listed there. This is our stream cable model. This was purchased through the same grant that Michelle's working off of. And that grant was meant to target this one very small watershed, the Durano Creek watershed. It goes through the outdoor learning center here. But we realized that this thing isn't being used at all by anybody. We were using it a lot during um, uh, the years when kids were here, but all came to an end. So anyway, we put this into the rotation and we told them that this one you cannot just borrow and do on your own. Instead, you have to just uh, have a GBRA person haul it to your school and teach the lesson. So this is in Michelle's rotation. She takes it to school here in Sabine and up the road in another district called Navarro. And uh, I'm going to be taking it to some Comal schools and down to Copacabana and uh, just uh, all up and down the area. So it's uh, fun when you uncover it. It has a cover over here to keep when you're transporting it. You want to keep this stuff from flying out. So we have to just completely tear everything down and. Uh, when you uncover it, you never know what you're going to see. So if you've ever worked with the stream table, you might have worked with sand before, but this one uh, was purchased through um, recommendation from AgriLife people who told me that these people up at the Oklahoma State University build these things. So they built this for us and the media that they use is plastic. It's not sand. A sand is a good one to use if you're only going to use the stream table once. If you're going to use it more than once, the sand gets really saturated and it doesn't move. But 
With this, though, it's very porous material. It is plastic, and it's always fun to ask the kids what they think it is, and you're probably wondering too. And what it is is crushed up buttons. Crushed up buttons. So what we try to do is set up a, a river basin system, our river basin system. I'm gonna turn it over to Michelle because I'm talking way too much. Okay, so our this this trailer is set up for the Guadalupe River Basin, which is all these, all these the <laughs> so, so on the Guadalupe River Basin, we've got the San, the San Marcos River that comes into the Guadalupe River Basin, and then we've got the San Antonio River that goes into the Guadalupe Basin, closer down to the coast. So this one is set up as if this was the San Marcos River, and on this side, we had the Guadalupe River. Well, in between those two rivers, we've got cities. So this is kind of the San Marcos, and then it, it morphs into New Braunfels. And as these, our main goal when we are working with this is to teach kids the vocabulary words, erosion, sediment, deposition, and then as all that is carried down to the coast, the river delta, which is for the new land form that's formed down by the coast. And we also decided we wanted to include uh, pollutants. So we have little beads in here and each color bead represents a different pollutant. The red beads represent toxins. The green beads represent nutrients. We have brown beads in here somewhere that represent bacteria oh, no. and yellow. So we kind of just embed them in this so that when we actually turn the water on and we start to see the erosion take place, you'll see the little beads start to move as well. We built this up so that up at the headwaters, which is where our rivers begin, it's up in the hill country. So we use all those rocks to uh, represent the hill country. So we have an urban area, we have a couple of bridges, we have a crop, this is uh, corn. We have uh, a little ranch here with some horses. We have cattle, we have pigs. And if, depending on the grade level, we if it's fifth grade, we typically let them set it up. You know, we give them guidance. Here's a cow, you force them work on cows, you kids work on the houses and so on. And once we get it all set up, then we're going to make some hypotheses and then turn on the water to see what happens. So let's see what happens. So this really gets the kids pretty excited. Um, because they um, can actually see something taking place, right? Sometimes we'll run it really slow. Here you can see there's a little green bead. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little green bead on the move. We've got banks that are collapsing. We've got trees that are falling. <laughs> and this sediment is making its way down in the co into the coastal area. And eventually we will see a delta being formed. So we continuously use the vocabulary that's in the teeth so that we can, uh, you know, really just try to help out the teachers and teach them some of these more difficult concepts. Right. So we're really pleased with this little stream trailer. Um, we wish it would get more action. I think once the word gets out, we'll probably have more requests than we can handle because really our, the GBRA education staff just Liz and I and Michelle works for us on a contract basis. Anything else? All right. So now, do y'all have any questions? There was a question about the cost of the model. Oh. And we have two big models. We have a river basin model and this one. And I'll let Cindy explain how we acquired them with cost. Both of them were acquired through grants. The river basin model, and there was a photograph in one of those slides. It's just a big seven foot long, three foot wide model that shows all the sub watersheds in the Guadalupe River Basin. And I got that through an EPA grant and I believe it cost, well, I got it at a real bargain because I sweet talked to God, but I think it was around $9,000. <laughs> so 9,000 for the River Basin model. And I have used that for the last, I don't know, 10, 10 15 years. And this one, uh, again, was through a grant and um, Rack in my brain, I believe it was around $30,000. And it took us a long time to get this thing made, I tell you, a long time. Because there was turnover at Oklahoma State University and this and that. But um, it's, it has served us well here at the Outdoor Learning Center. 
if you want a better cost on that than me guessing, my memory is not always that great, you can send me an email and I will talk to the people who produce it and find out what they're charging these days. I know they're still making models. Most all of our big toys we acquire through grants because that's just a big line item to budget for. So we look for grants often. And then behind us over there is another trailer, the trailer that was shown in the slideshow photograph that was also funded through TC, the TC a grant. grant. Yeah. So big toys equal grants. Yes. <laughs> there was also, uh, guys, there was also a question earlier about if you've had to invest any resources um, and maybe this is something you're considering for maintenance of the digital things that you've created. So some of the digital content, uh, like the Waters to the Sea programs, those are that going to be maintained. Yeah. yeah, they've been developed. They, they, there's an actual upgrade from Flash module to HTML5 programming and to the story maps with ArcGIS on, with Esri, um, but that's powered through the University of Hamline University. Hamline University. So if anybody's interested in the Waters to the Sea, really, we have done the vast majority of the work. If you wanted to contact them, you could, you know, I put together little, um, they call them galleries, but they're little slideshows. There's so much in Waters to the Sea. There's video, there's uh, galleries, there's animations, there's modules. Uh, there's just so much in there, but we did the vast majority of the, just the solid fundamental work that others could come in and do their own versions of it fairly easily. I think the cost that I paid for the revisions on that was 15,000. That, that was over a course of three years. And then the other digital content that we have created is you know, just by me or Cindy through Google. So we just kind of on our own staff time, just between us, make a, a lot of our content. And we have other tools that are available to us um, through GBRA, um, like corporate office accounts or something. So we have all those tools already built in. So we just use what we have available. We don't, if we if there's something we don't have, then we'll request it. And if it gets approved, then we'll, we'll have a new software to play with. Um, but we just generate our own content and lots of research and comparing goes through and trying to stay up with trends and things like that. It's just on us. Any other questions? This has been awesome. You guys have presented so many wonderful resources here. I'm amazed at, at what you've done this year. Does anybody have any other questions? Drop them in the chat real quick. Um, and if you could, Melissa, you could share our emails and people can send questions later. Sure. As they, it's kind of a lot of info. So sometimes it's hard to think of a question when you're yeah, live. Yeah, through a lot of information. Kids have fun putting this together though. Cause you know, we always use somewhere in those sheets it says models have limitations. Well, yes, because most chickens are not this big, you know, compared to horse and ducks you know are not this big and i think we have a cat out here somewhere. animals are as big Some as the buildings the or houses <laughs> and it was a challenge to find the, the props for this i ended up going to a railroad um store where they sell little models for trains and things like that for some of it some of it we already had you know this came off of a non source model so we just kind of piece things together as best we could, but nothing is to scale, nothing. Definitely. All right, no further questions. I think we've taken up our entire 45 minutes. All right, well, thank you so much.